It's finally happened, ladies and gentlemen. James Harden is on the Los Angeles Clippers. What's going on, everybody? This is Billy, one half of the Off the Glass podcast. And I'm up here giving y'all my initial reactions to the James Harden trade. Um, I'm doing this in one take, so bear with me. But the trade broke at like 2 or 3 in the morning, depending on where uh, where you're at in the country. Um, I slept through the whole thing. I didn't see it until I woke up this morning. Um, but the full trade details are finally out. The Clippers are getting former MVP and 10-time All-Star James Harden, as well as P.J. Tucker. And they're sending over to the 76ers Nicholas Batum, Marcus Morris, Robert Covington, K.J. Martin, two first-round picks, a first-round pick swap, and two second-round picks as well. Um, now I'm going to be honest with y'all. I like this trade for the 76ers. The episode that will be dropping later today on Tuesday, um, you'll see, we actually talked about prior to the, you know, we recorded that on Monday night before the trade came out. We talked about, um, what the 76ers team has looked like to start this season. Um, and really the biggest storyline has been the jump from Tyrese Maxey, which, you know, I think everybody, myself included, especially a lot of NBA fans, um, were expecting him to take a jump. I don't know if anybody saw the jump being this big. Now, granted, it's a three-game sample size. We'll see how it looks as we get you know, 20, 25-plus games out into the season. But right now, through three games, he's averaging 30 points, 6.7 rebounds, 6.3 assists on 50% from the field and 56% from the three-point line on over eight shots from three a game. That is unbelievable efficiency. He's shooting the skin off the ball right now with insane volume, and he looks super comfortable just being able to play free there in the backcourt without having to play with James Harden. Um, and to be honest, this, prior to us starting the podcast, like when the Ben Simmons situation happened in Philadelphia – um, and Daryl Morey was looking for, you know, ways to figure out how to trade him, what to trade him for, what the best package is going to be. I was of the, the, you know, the line of thinking that you don't have to go out and get a, you know, a star player back. If you can find a couple of good role player pieces that just fit your team better, you have an, at the time, what was an MVP caliber player in Joel Embiid, what we now know is the reigning MVP of the NBA have a young guy in Tyrese Max. You've got Tobias Harris being kind of a glue guy piece for them. Um, you know, third option who we know on any given night can step up his, his scoring production. So like just fit the puzzle pieces around those guys. Do not try to do this massive shakeup and bring in another superstar that you have to deal with, you know, trying to manage their ego expectations and, you know, different things like that. But they went out anyway. They got James Harden. And look, at the end of the day, you say what you want about health. It is what it is. What that team produced with James Harden is the same thing they produced prior to James Harden. They weren't able to get out of the second round of the playoffs. And this last series against um, Boston this past year was particularly embarrassing because we had Harden and Embiid no shows for Philadelphia in the playoffs late in that series, late in game six. And all of game seven was an absolute embarrassment. They got blown out in Boston. Um, when they were up 3-2 in the series. Um, so I actually like this move because, like I said, it gives Tyrese Maxey the, the ability to really spread his wings in this offense and continue to be comfortable. They're not going to bring in a guy that's going to be super ball dominant, take the ball out of his hands. Now, I think it's okay that he's not the greatest uh, playmaker. He's not the the elite level playmaker that, that James Harden was, but I also think you don't necessarily need to have an elite level playmaker when your best player is an MVP center who is one of the most dominant forces we've seen since a guy like Shaquille O'Neal. Like he doesn't need somebody to set him up. He can take the ball into the post himself and play bully ball with guys, command gravity down low, and he can kick out from there and work from the post. You can kind of almost do it by committee in that sense. So I really do like this deal for for Philly for for that reason. Also, because again, you're bringing in guys who have a ton, a ton of playoff experience, vets like Batum and Marcus Morris and Robert Covington. They've been around the block. They've been on deep playoff runs. Um, they know what their role is. They're going to be able to come in and do two things very well. All three of them. 
going to be able to space the floor and hit open shots. And they're going to play quality defense, which are two things that every team that has championship aspirations, you need guys like Nicholas Batum, Marcus Morris, or Robert Covington on there. So I, I like those pickups a lot. They'll be able to come in and fit and play their role right away from day one. Um, additionally, KJ Martin is a nice pickup. You're bringing in a young guy who has a lot of upside, ton of athleticism, um, was a bright spot on the Rockets last year. I think there was a lot of promise for him going to the Clippers and getting minutes because he kind of got log jammed with how much young talent they had in Houston. But, um, you know, I'm not sure what his role will be right away with the Sixers team, but um, I like the upside that he presents. I like, you know, the spark, the energy, the athleticism that he brings. Him and Tyrese Maxey can play really fast paced together. So I like that addition as well. Um, and of course, the draft picks that they're able to get back, you know, we're looking at 2026 20, and beyond. So similar, similar line of thinking to what the uh, the Bucks did with the South or vice versa, what the um, um, the Bucks did in the Damian Lillard trade um, going out and they're sending out their first round picks. Um, to Portland, um, and Portland is pulling back picks that might not convey until 2028, 2030. Damian Lillard might be retired by then. The Bucks might be in a full rebuild. So they're banking that that might be something that happens um, for Milwaukee the same way that, um, you know, now we have the Sixers banking that, you know, come 2026, 2027, when these picks start rolling in, who's going to be in, in the Clippers organization? Is Kawhi going to be there? Is PG going to be there? Are they going to be in the league still? Like, these are all valid questions, and if that's the case, they might be in a full rebuild and be a lottery team, and now the Sixers are just getting your first-round pick for this. Um, so, you know, that's an added bonus to it. And, and the last thing that I'll really say about it um, is it also puts them in a position where they have um, potential to have over $65 million in uh, salary cap space next summer. Um, now, the free agent pool for next year isn't the greatest. Biggest guy up here is probably... Uh, Pascal Siakam, I'd say, um, you know, coming from Toronto, um, he has a potential to even be traded this year with, with the way that Toronto has looked early on and just some of the rumblings coming out of last season. Um, but even guys like Clay Thompson is going to be, be a free agent, Gordon Hayward, DeMar DeRozan, Buddy Heald. Um, so there's some quality players that they can go in and um, add with the cap space that they're going to have with some of these expiring deals that they just took on in this trade. So I think it opens up a lot of flexibility for them moving forward. I think it acquired good draft capital for them, which again, they could not necessarily even keep. They could flip that into another asset for another guy, another superstar that may want out. Um, or again, just looking to continue to build around a core that is focused on Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey, which I think was the right decision for this organization moving forward. Again, it's not the greatest that James Harden kind of tanked his trade value with some of the antics that he's done um, and obviously really only wanting to go to the Clippers. Um, and really just his his reputation right now in the league. I mean, I just saw it. It's wild to think about, but this is his his fourth team in 22 months. 22 months he's going to be on his fourth NBA team. Um, and he's forced his way out of every single place with trade requ requests. So, um, yeah, it's it's a tough spot for Darren Moore to be in, but I do think this was the right move. I like it. I like that it's given Tyrese Maxey the freedom. Um, so I'm excited to see the, the 76ers roster moving forward. Do I think it makes them a championship contender? No, they're not on the same tier as Milwaukee or Boston, or even if we look out west as with, with Denver or Phoenix. Um, but to be honest with you, they weren't a championship contender with James Harden anyway. Um, and I know Daryl Morey said that he wasn't going to move him unless it was a move that he felt would make them a contender. I don't think that trade existed. I don't think it was out there anywhere. I don't think he was going to find it because a lot of teams are probably cautious about wanting to take on Harden in a contract year. Um, and at a time where, again, he's on, he's been on four teams in 22 months. Who's to say the next team he goes to, he'll be on for more than a year. Like that's just not a guarantee at this point. Um, so there's a lot of risk that comes with trading for a guy like Harden. So this, I think was probably the best return that they were going to get for him. So I'm glad that he was able to pull the trigger. Now, flip side, let's look over at the Clipper side of things. Um, again, they went out and got got their guy, right? They they add another, you know, superstar level talent to 
their core surrounding Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. Um, this team is very, very, very top heavy. I mean, they were relatively top heavy beforehand, and we've seen that come and, and you know, bite them in, in the, the foot previously, you know, with injuries that, you know, Kawhi and PG have sustained and, you know, their roster just kind of fizzles out in the playoffs because of that. Um, and, and that's just unfortunate, but, you know, that has to be something that you consider when you're looking at, you know, this, the strength of this roster is they're really dependent on all three of these guys being healthy, which is a tough ask, especially when you look at the history for all three of them. It's hard for them to stay on the floor consistently and especially come playoff time for all three of them to be, to be healthy in the playoffs. Um, and, and that includes James Harden. We've seen him have a couple of flat tires. He's been dealing with the hamstring issues for the last couple of seasons um, that have been you know plaguing him throughout the year and, and including the playoffs as well. Um, so that's something that, you know, you're just going to have to hope they can, can stay healthy come playoff time. Um, but, you know, there's some interesting lineups. They were able to still keep Terrence Mann in this deal, which when, when, you know, when the early reports were coming out was, you know, the main person that the 76ers were asking for. Um, but what I will say for the Clippers, um, obviously if all three of them can stay healthy, Healthy Kawhi, healthy Paul George, healthy James Harden is a formidable trio in the NBA, not just the Western Conference. I completely understand that. What I will also say is we've seen Harden have inconsistencies in the playoffs. We've seen Russell Westbrook have inconsistency in the playoffs. Paul George and Kawhi have, you know, health issues that have hurt them in the playoffs. There's a lot of risk on this roster, um, but at the end of the day, what else can they really do, right? Like they're in a position where they traded away their future to bring in Kawhi and PG and, you know, haven't been able to, you know, get the championship out of it where they've been in championship or bus mode really since those guys have gotten there. Um, and outside of, you know, really the bubble, they haven't been able to be healthy in the playoffs. So we're going on, you know, since four years from then almost. Um, so you're adding even more risk with a guy like James Harden, but if they're able to stay healthy. It's going to be a very, very, very tough lineup for teams to beat because their defense is just as good because you're also bringing in P.J. Tucker, like I mentioned as well. He's coming in um, to L.A. with Harden from Philly. Um, and we know what PJ Tucker is. He's a, a high, high impact role player um, who can go full games, multiple games in a row with no shot attempts. He can play 40 plus minutes. He has no problems about it. He's going to give absolute 100% effort on both sides of the ball, whatever he's asked to do rebound, set screens, you know, play point of attack defense, rotate, put his body on the line. Like he is a pro's pro. He's one of the best role players in the game. He's one of the scrappiest players in the league. Um, so that's also, I think, a huge, huge pickup here for the Clippers. Um, so, yeah, it, it's really just going to come down to, to health and performance in the playoffs. The Clippers are always been a team that coasts through the regular season. They're never going to be a team that's going to be competing for a you know, one or two seed out west. They're going to be looking to be a five seed, a six seed, make sure that their guys get adequate wet rest throughout the season. Um, and just get to the playoffs healthy um, and intact. Because if you do that, that's all that this this front office can ask for. And then the players just have to go out there and play. And like I said, there's been inconsistent performances from James Harden. If you've been listening to the pod for a while, you've heard me and Dame go off on, on Harden, especially for this last postseason um, with what he did in that Celtic series. And that dates back to his time in Houston. Like that's just been a theme for Harden. He gets to the playoffs, and he, he sometimes no-shows. Same thing has happened to Russell Westbrook. Both of them are going to be very, very key contributors to their playoff rotation um, when we get to April. So it, that just is what it is. But I, I think that I, I understand from a Clippers perspective, you feel like you've already been championship bust, championship or bust for so long. You have to go out and make a move like this. So – it's tough. If I'm being honest, I wouldn't have done it if I was Jerry West and the Clippers. Um, I just think the risk that was on the roster was already so great. Why are we making it, you know, 
even bigger of a factor trading out some of our good um, quality role player our quality role players our depth pieces that that they sent over to um, the 76ers um, you're really just pushing all your chips to the table t- to the middle of the table excuse me and saying Kawhi, PG James please please just stay healthy that's all they can hope for um, but at the end of the day, I, I, I'm, I'm still interested to see how this team looks. I'm interested to see how James Harden fits. Again, you're bringing in a guy who, at worst, can probably sleepwalk to 20 points and 10 assists any given night. He's one of the, the elite playmakers um, in the league at, you know, finding guys, playing the pick and roll. Um, him and Zubac, will, will, he's going to elevate Zubac's game, um, as James Harden has really done with, with every big that he's played with. Um, in terms of just being able to force feed him buckets out of the pick and roll, um, you know, with little pocket passes and lobs and things like that. So, um, you know, I think that that'll definitely take their their game to the next level in that aspect. Um, so, yeah, definitely interested, definitely interested for what this Clippers going to Clippers roster is going to look like. And this season is just, you know, it's, it's very young, but it's still very exciting. We're only three, four games in, I think, for you know all the teams. And here we are with another blockbuster deal on the heels of the Damian Lillard trade right before the season started. Um, so we're we're in full effect. <laughs> the NBA is back in full effect. There's never going to be a dull moment. Um, and now we just wait for the next superstar to be traded because um, I, I imagine there will be a couple of more big deals like this um, before the trade deadline at this point this year, just with the way that some of these teams, looking at you, Chicago, looking at you, Toronto, um, ha- have started the season um, and some of the struggles that they've had on the court and in the locker room. Um, so I-, I think it'll only be a matter of time before I'm doing another video just like this for a Zach Levine trade or a Carl Anthony Towns trade or a Siakam trade or something like that. So, um, But yeah, let me know what you think about this deal below. Like I said, um, if I had to grade it, I probably would give it a... B plus for the Sixers. Like I said, it's not the greatest return, but you know, all things considered, I really do like what they got back for the Clippers. I probably give it a, a B minus. I can't give it lower. Cause again, at the end of the day, you're getting an all-star level guy back. You didn't have to give up Terrence Mann or any of your, your core superstar players. Um, but the fit, the risk, it's all just too many question marks for me to be super comfortable with. Um, but let me know what you think below. Um, and as always, we appreciate you for listening. Go ahead and follow the socials there at the bottom at Off the Glass Pod on Instagram, at Off the Glass Podcast on TikTok. Like, comment, sub up to the channel. We appreciate all the support as always. I'm just Billy and I'm out. Peace.